All right, welcome back to our channel. We're going to do some math today. Today, um, we're going to be going over um, more of what we have been going over. And this is actually our last lesson in this section. And so um, the first thing, actually here, this is what I want to start with. So today you'll be able to write and graph equations of functions and compare the graphs of related functions. So writing and graphing equations are very, like, I don't know if you guys noticed, but that's what you could have consistently done since you learned how to graph, right? Compare the graphs of related functions and what is the effect of the graph when a number is added to an equation of the function, right? You're basically asking, hey, what does this thing do to it, right? Like, and as a curious child, you probably did that, right? Like, I don't know if you guys got like those little toys when you were younger and it had like a button, it had like something that you can turn or whatever and something that you can pull. And each one of those things were get, getting your brain to be used to, like, if I do this, then this will happen, right? So that's what this lesson is all about. But to start, I want you guys to look at this. So it says, which one doesn't belong, okay? Um, which one doesn't belong is a really good tactic for you guys to compare and contrast things. So if I could, I, I would really want A, B, and C, and D all on the same page. So look at A, B, C, and D, and decide which one of these for you doesn't belong. Now look, I'm gonna be honest with you. The answer is all of them. All of them don't belong. The real answer here is not which one you chose, but why you chose it, okay? So go through A, B, C, and D and decide which one to you looks the differentest and decide and, and make sure your reasoning is strong on that. So while you're doing that, I'm gonna talk about reasoning. When you guys are reasoning through things, when you're showing things, when you're explaining things, that's when you become more mature in, in, in doing all those things, okay? So if you just say A, and I say, okay, well, why A? And you say, because, that's not strong, okay? I can tell you right now, if you ever, 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 oh, sorry. Yes, Noah, I was maybe, the answer to your question is yes, but you're not the only one. Um, let's see. Oh my gosh. Yes, that counts. Yes. All the things that you do as a little child, right? Your mom tells you, don't touch the stove. What did you guys do? You touched the stove, didn't you? How many times did she have to teach you not to touch the stove? Once, right? How many times did she have to tell you? Maybe many times, right? But how many, how many times did you touch it? Someone said so many times. <laughs> okay. So um, I want you to explain why you chose this. So if you put in the chat, tell me in the chat, um, did you choose a... Did you choose B? Did you choose C perhaps or D? Now, everyone can choose C. Great. But everyone should choose C and their reasoning should be very, very different. Got it? All right. So I'll give you a couple more seconds. While you're doing that, I'm gonna do this thing. <sighs> okay, so in the chat, A, B, C, or D? Okay, so someone says, I would choose A because it has more negatives and the X is out of order, right? Someone said they have more negatives on, I assume on the Y side, right? Okay, someone else put E, none of the above. That's not one of your choices, y'all. Okay, so, okay, so someone says, yeah, this one. Someone earlier said they're all the same because their slope is all two. Okay, so this one has a slope of two, I agree. This one has a slope of two, look, it goes up two. This one has a slope of two, wait. This one has a slope of two. So you found the common, right? You found what was common between all of them. What makes this one here? Let's do this together. What makes D different than everybody else? What makes D different than everybody else? Get in there, write something. Just be okay with being wrong.
Isn't D a straight line? Is D a straight line? What do you guys think? Is D a straight line? D is a straight line, right? You can graph it. Ah! There it goes. Straight line. By the way, straight line is redundant, redundant. Right. Do you guys know what redundant means? Redundant, redundant. So a straight line, a line can only be straight. I get what you're saying because when Miss Johnson draws a line, it is not straight by any means, but because she's not a computer. Um, is this, is this going to represent a line? They're all linear equations. That's right. Yeah. This one. Okay. Which of these two, which, what, what makes these two different of these two, what makes it different? Get in there, answer. All right. Yeah, someone said, hey, Ms. Johnson, D is different because this is the only one out of all four that gives you the equation of that line, right? Someone else said, um, Someone else said, this is the only one that's graphed. I can go on, right? So I want you guys to be so good at observing that you should be able to rattle these things off. So I'm gonna pick D and I'm gonna list just the first four things that come to my head. D doesn't belong because it's the only one represented as a, as a function, as an equation, right? Ever, all the other representations are tables or graphs. Um, D is also different because it's the only one that goes through the origin. You guys all see that? This is the only one that goes to the origin. Um, this one's also different because it's the only one labeled as G of X. Everybody else is labeled differently. F of X, this one's not even labeled, right? So maybe he's just Y. Um, <clears throat> another one that's different is this is the only one that has even values for Y. Odd values for Y. Oh no, this one has even values for Y. Just kidding. Um, and this one right? Um, let me see. What else can I say about this thing? Um, this is the, this one is continuous. This one is technically discrete. Remember dis continuous and discrete, right? Um, and then the last one is, this is the, um, this one and the graph are the only ones that have in-betweeners. These guys don't have in-betweeners technically because they're not all listed. So when you, when you learn about when you're, when I'm asking you about these questions, your gift of observation is is supposed to be used and um what is that word like made better refined is the right word right like have you ever has anybody ever said anything to you and you're like thanks captain obvious you know that that statement that captain obvious that's what i want you to be here i want you to make such um observations that someone else who was thinking about like this really like high complex thing and is like, oh, that's all she wanted was just an observation. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So um, I will tell you right now, if you can do a better job of observing, there's other areas in your life that are just going to get better. Okay. Like driving is one of them. You all don't drive yet. Right. So driving is one of them. Why, Ms. Johnson, why is it important for you to observe? Because like, um, random, random story. When I was driving this one time, we were on a pretty fast, um, a street that allowed you to go pretty fast. All of a sudden this car that's kind of in front of me and to the left, so that not directly in front of me, but to the left slows down. So what is your instinct when a car next to you slows down? What should you also do? Yes. Slow down. Very good. Um, why shouldn't you slow down? Why shouldn't you speed up? Because there's a reason that they couldn't, that they slow down. Now this car happened to be in front of me was a really big, tall car. And I was driving my little Honda Civic. It was very little, very short car. And this car was like, I want to say like a, like a 
like a tundra, like a big truck like thing. And then, so he slowed down. So I slowed down. So, and then I figured out why we were slowing down. There was a guy randomly running across the street, just like running, like full on traffic. We were going like 50 miles an hour. He slows down. I slow down. Like I look at him and I'm like, you are bold. You are brave. This is not something I want to be bold or raven. So then he keeps running the car next to me. That's a little bit behind me. Does he slow down? No. What happens to guy? Yeah. He got hit by the car. Like if you've ever wondered about the battle between human body versus car, car, car. No, he didn't turn into pancake. He, he, um, he, the, the guy turned, the guy who was actually hit him was going like, he slowed down slow enough where it, the guy like got hit by the car. And then he kind of like, like turned in a, like he, his body turned in a circle and then he sat down against the curb. So he wasn't like, he didn't fly or anything. It wasn't that kind of story. Um, but the guy was clearly like, um, what is it called? He was out of sorts. So when you're making these observations and your guys are like, really, Ms. Johnson, math class makes you a better driver. Yeah, actually, because you start noticing patterns. So when you're driving on the freeway and in front of you, you see a bunch of red lights. Red lights means brake lights, right? You guys all know that? Yeah. What Should you push on the gas? No. Stop. Stop. All right. I'm going to move on now. All right. So here's what you'll be able to do today. Okay, so every day when Rashid's mother comes home from work, he asks her how her day's what day was, and she says, another day, another dollar. Being a mathematical thinker, Rashid started imagining the function that would model his mother's saying. His thinking went something like this. On day zero, she hadn't worked, so she got zero dollars. Zero. On day one, she worked and got a dollar on day two she got another dollar so now total she has two dollars on day three she gets another dollar so now she has three dollars here's this graph model the function that this pattern with a table and an explicit equation so go ahead right now and give me a table and an equation that represents um his thinking okay i'm gonna pause it really quick Okay, so I got some of your answers in back there, and we also had a really good discussion about why did Rashid like graph all this negative stuff. Um, pretty good discussion. Um, negative dollars actually make sense. It's when you owe the bank money or you owe someone money. Like if I borrowed five dollars from you, now I owe you five dollars, so it would be negative five. And days, negative days could make sense if you think about like if today is day zero, then what would yesterday be called? negative one, right? It's just a reference point. It's not like the day is actually negative. It's just a reference point, like before, after, and so on. Yeah, Monday. Exactly. So um, some of you came up with the equation. So yes, very good. Um, some of you said F of N being the day, or I don't know, maybe you did F of D. I don't know. And you said it was just going to be D, right? Whatever day it is, that's how much total money she has. So after 10 days, she's going to have $10. So for whoever said that, perfect. Um, if you put 1 times D, that's fine. If you put 1 times N and your, your variable is N, that's perfect. Um, some of you wrote a table out. That's really good too. Let's continue on. As Rashid pursued his thinking, he wondered what would happen to his function if he started with $5 on day zero and then earned a dollar. So we started with $5. So if you look over here, how much did she start with? Zero, right? So how would you change my function now is the question. How would you change my function? So what would it be now? F of D. And by the way, some of you are saying this wrong and I'm catching it on your flip grids. For those of you who are practicing saying flip grids, I mean, practicing your words on Flipgrid, that's awesome because I'm able to catch what you guys aren't saying correctly. Some of you are calling this FD or FX, right? Just say F of D. Okay. We're saying how much money do you have on day D? 
right? What do you think, Ashley? What do you think? I'm oh, sorry, you already answered my question. I was just gonna ask if I was saying it like right, because I was like, wait, do I say F of X or like F of B? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. F of D. Now don't think that this means F times D. That's where another people a couple of other people were saying F times D. And that's yes, I understand that parentheses means um uh multiplication sometimes, but not in this case. Okay. I know that's confusing for mathematics. I don't like I don't like the confusion part there, but um, I'm going to make sure that you say it correctly. So if I started with $5 on day zero, how does that change my equation? Before my equation was just D. How's that going to change my equation? How is that going to change my equation? What do you guys think? Well, there's going to have to be a five somewhere, right? There's going to have to be a five somewhere. So you're... I mean, your equation could just go like this because you guys know it's a, um, because you guys know it's a line, right? You just saw it as a line over here, right? So it's either going to affect A, your slope or B, your B, haha, <laughs> just kidding, um, or your y-intercept. So is it going to affect your slope or is it going to affect your y-intercept? What do you guys think? What does the slope mean? In this case, what does his slope mean? Why did he write this as his slope? Why did he write it? Why did I write my slope as this? What's my slope right there? What's that number in front? Yeah, it's a one. What does that one represent in this picture? Yeah, perfect. Someone said dollars per day. Dollars per day. Someone else said the money that I that the mom gets each day. Not how much money is in the bank, right? Just how much she gets like from day four to day five, like that change. And this is how you can always look at slope. Slope is always going to be dollars per day, right? Because slope is always going to be your... Y, uh, like your change, your rise over your run or your change in Y over your change in X, right? Yeah, it's dollars per day. So that's one. Okay, so then going back over here, does that change? Because now we start with $5, does that change? Does the dollars per day change? Good, no, it doesn't. Okay, so it doesn't change the M. Say it again, huh? Isn't it at a constant rate? Yeah, it's still $1. Like, just because you have $5 in the bank on day zero, does it now mean she's going to earn $5 per day? Like, did that happen? No, she just said it's a dollar a day. I don't think she's actually earning a dollar a day, by the way. It's just something that she says. So then it must be our intercept. So we're going to write it plus five. Does that make sense? Yeah, nice. So is everybody okay with plus five? So what's the difference between those two equations? Let's look, here's X versus here's X plus five. You guys all see the difference? Yeah, right? So that five affected and it pushed this whole equation up, right? Everybody okay with that? All right, moving on. Oh wait, did I finish that second question? I did. Okay, so it says compare problem two to the original graph. We already did that. I'm sorry. Rashid thought about the, all the bills his family needed to pay and wondered what the function would be if the situation changed so that on day zero, they owed $10. They owed $10. So everybody pause right now. I'm going to give you a couple seconds to write out your equation. If you want to be fancy and write it out like me, just hit this little math button right here. F of D, I'm still going with F of D equals two. How does my function change if we're thinking about their family bills and that they owed $10 and then add a dollar a day? Yes. No, you don't have to do the table. <laughs> You're so funny. 
I don't know. That's a good question. All right. What would you do though? How would you write this equation, y'all? Come on. These are good questions you guys are asking. So where would I put my, I guess it's going to be a 10, right? Is this going to be a, where does this 10 go? Yeah, let's go math time. Where does the 10 go? Some of you put this the last time, you just put a five here. Five actually means this, right? Like if I just graph the line y equals to five, it looks like this. In this situation, it would mean that she has $5 in her bank account and her money's not going up and her money's not going down or anything like that. Does that make sense? So we're just at five, but that's not what this says. So can I get a couple more people in the, oh, someone, I have two people, three people. I have three people now who know how to write this equation. Can you write this equation? So for those of you who are a little frustrated about your quiz grades, this is the time that you redeem that, right? This is the time that you redeem. Okay, I have four people. I've got four people in the chat who know the answer. Um, you can, but focus on this right here, right here. Yes, sir. So where do we put that minus 10? Yeah, okay, I've got five people. Come on, y'all. I'm literally waiting. Wait, why don't I wait and give these people some points here? Yes, I got, uh, no. You're missing a variable, hon. All right, let me see. Okay, so if I put a five right here, what does that five represent? If I put a five right here, what does that five represent? Yeah, that's how much money I get per day. That's how much money I get per day. Are you saying to me that they're getting $5 a day? Someone says, no, because someone put this in the equation. Someone put this as their equation, right? So this means I get $5 a day, but I started owing $10. That's not what this says. This says add a dollar a day. So that means this guy's got to go away. And I'm using the wrong letter. I'm using X. I should be using D. You can use X. It doesn't matter. So what happens to this equation? We, we... We graphed the other one, so let's see, x minus 10. Where'd it go? Oh, it went all the way down here. Yeah, this represents, someone said, hey, Ms. Johnson, is this like them getting out of debt? Kind of. Although I wouldn't necessarily consider $10 debt, right? Debt is something that you, it's like, it's a little bit more substantial than $10, right? Okay. All right, <laughs> it's mini debt. I like that. All right, let's continue. Okay, it says, Rashid thought a dollar a day is no way to get ahead. What if I start with on day? Wait, what if I start with on day and double my dollars each day? That means I'd have blank on day. Oh, I missed some of these words. Let me grab, let me grab the correct words here. Give me a second. Actually, I can go right here. Let me go to number six. I skipped some of these words when I was typing this out. Okay, so so a dollar a day is no way to get ahead. If I start with a dollar on day zero and double my dollars each day, that means I'd have two dollars on day one, four day four dollars on day two, eight dollars on day three. I'd come home from home another instead of her the mom saying another day another dollar, she, he would say another day another double. So let D of T be the function that models this situation. Represent it with a table or graph. So can you guys do that for me really quick? I want a table. I want a graph. I want a, um, an equation. For those of you who are talented at this, let's go. I need an equation as well. You guys' chat is funny. 
I wish you would publicly chat. Some of you should really publicly chat. Okay, so in my table, and I'm going to draw this over here. I'm going to get into this part right here. All right, so if I drew a table, actually, I like inserting tables better because it makes my world a little bit better. So, so if this was the, the days, and this in this case, they're using t for time, so I'm going to go with them. And this is the of t, right? So on day zero, he says, I have a dollar. And on day one, I'd have $2. So this is one, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna put T. Okay, and over here, I got what? Two, four, eight. What comes after eight? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, this in this case, it's you're doubling, right? So it's not 10, it's going to be 16, right? Every single time you're doubling, 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 right? So what is that? What is that function? So someone said the function earlier was 2x. And if you plug that in, 0 times 2 is not 1. So it can't be 2 times x, right? Yeah, that's correct, by the way. Someone put it in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. So this is not one of those equations that that's going to look like a line, right? Because look, if I start graphing this, I'll use this guy. No, no, this guy. Let's see this. All right. For this one, if you start plugging him in, for those of you who want to learn how to do tables, look, it's plus table. And then I'm going to start plugging him in, right? So you said zero one, two, three, four. And then here it was one, two, four, um, eight, 16. Does this look like a line? Does that look like a line? Yeah, very good. Yeah, this does not look like a line, Ms. Johnson. This does not look like a line. Yeah, someone said, hey, Ms. Johnson, is it exponential? Okay, if that's true, what would my function be? d of t equals two. Yeah, discrete. Nice. Good job. Yeah, it's just two to the t, someone says. I'm going to use x because that's, oh, sorry. I'm going to use t here. And I'm going to use two to the x here, just so you could see. What made you know that it was two to the x and not anything else? You see how my black curve goes through all my green dots? That means I know. Very good. Someone said it's, it's going to be discrete. It's dot by dot. Technically, you would not have these in-betweeners, right? Okay. So for those of you who didn't know this one was going to be an exponential, listen to what they say. It's doubling it. So we did this. Rashid wondered what would happen to this function if he added $3 to every output. What is your prediction? What does that mean? Three dollars for every output. What does that mean? What? How would I change my equation? What would you do to change this equation? So you have this two to the t, right? What does it mean to add three? Now there's only a couple places you can add three. People, you can add three up here. Um, sorry, that's not up here. Just kidding. Let's pretend. You can add three up here. You can add three down here. And some people think you can add two to the base. Um, I will say, yes, you can do that, but I'm not, I'm going to make you consider. Which three do you think they're asking you to add? Three to every output. 
up here or down here? Just guess. So I'm going to make this like y sub 2, like our, our second version, right? So for each of these, I'm going to add $3 to it. So if I add 1 to 3, I get 4. You guys all see what I'm doing? 5. You guys all with me? 7. You with me? 11. You with me? 19. That's all they're asking me to do. Every single time, instead of $2, or instead of $1, I got four. Instead of $2, I got five. Instead of um, $4, I got, and so on and so forth. Do you guys all see that curve? Good. Someone said, try it, adding it to the bottom. Okay, so if I add this to the bottom, it should go through those purple points, right? Is that what you wanted it to do? Everyone's like, yeah, Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson, what would happen if you did add it to the top? Let's try. This is what I meant earlier by trying things out and like poking around. Ah, oh, man, is that what you wanted it to do? Everyone say yes or no. Is that what you wanted it to do? No, I wanted it to go through the purple points, Miss Johnson. So it wasn't to that because it said to the output, right? So plus three here. Is everybody comfortable with that? So let me erase this because this is wrong, right? So this is $3, and this makes sense. If you think about it, $3 to every output, that's what we did. We calculated it, and then we added three. And then we added three. Does everybody see this? So for those of you who aren't comfortable using this graphing calculator, use it, right? Like um, one of the things that I marvel about young people is that you're not afraid of breaking things. People of like my generation and a little bit older, they are really worried about breaking their computer. You guys have no fear. Like, eh, we can undo it. We can fix it. So don't think that you're going to break this calculator. Try things out. Like, oh, I think it should be plus three up here. And try it out. And some of you are thinking, like, Miss Johnson, what happened if I added the three to the two? Well, let's try. So let's go two plus three. And then to the X. Oh, crazy. Is that what I wanted it to do? No. But that is pretty cool. Like now I know what it's doing. Okay, so I turned this guy off. And this should actually make sense because of the, the math that we did earlier this year. All right, let's continue. It says, try it. Use an equation, a table, a graph. Okay, we did that. Um, let's see. If f of x equals x, what do you know about the graph of f of x plus b? Okay, so this is where I'm going to pause you. And I'm going to have you go talk to you. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm going to have you go talk to your neighbors about what is this plus B actually doing to your equation. So if you look back here, what happened when we added five? What happened when we subtracted 10? Right? What happened in all of those cases? So your job is to go back, ask your group, okay? I'm looking for really strong answers as you guys come back to to tell me what you guys all thought about what happens when we add b okay when we add b one second okay so you all were supposed to come back and tell me about what this b is now this b has a very specific job this b has this job that it's so important that's fine that um we talk about it in integrated two and in integrated three. His job remains the same throughout all of your time with math. And I talk about this over and over again. So if I can get you guys to learn this now, that means, you know, when we learn it for integrated two or three, we will spend less time on it, right? So um, what did you guys decide what B's job was? Some of you said it. So I'm going to show you a couple pictures. So B, when B was five, right? What did the function do? When we, B was negative 10, what did your function do? What did, what happened to your function? What is his job? So if you can find out what B's job is, right? Every single time you see a guy out here and it's B, right? Then you know what its job is to do. Just like red. Red means, no, it does not mean go. It means stop, right? It means stop. So your brain automatically knows. So does anybody know how to 
Someone put it in the chat earlier. What is B's job? This guy over here. When I wrote B out this way, what is B's job? Isn't B supposed to be X is a slope? M is the slope. M is the slope. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, I got you. Dang, I'm getting. Isn't B the Y intercept? Very good. It's the Y intercept. So when we did plus five, notice what happened to our um, Y intercept. He went up. What happened when our Y intercept was negative 10? He went. Yeah, he went down. So for those of you who want a quick description of B, he's his job is to move my function up or down. When does he move him up? When would he move him up? When would he move him down? So if you notice these observations, notice I've said this like three or four times, if you can observe these things, that's like most of your battle with math right there. Okay, so now we have this function two to the T, right? We already talked about him, two to the T. What do you know about the graph of D of T plus B? B represents any constant number. So you're like, I don't know. So you go over here and you're like, oh, let me just play around with it. So two to the X. <clears throat> Someone give me a number for B. Someone give me a number for B. Any number. Thanks. Plus eight. So I'm going to take my plus eight. And before I hit this eight, can you think about what you think would happen to your graph? What do you think you think would happen to your graph according to what we just talked about what is that eight gonna do to it okay and just so that we're all on the same page i'm gonna graph both of them oops i'm gonna graph both of them here and then i'm gonna grab plus eight is this what you thought would happen you're like Ms. Johnson, nothing happened um he's like up here you guys all see it? What what happened? What happened from red to blue? What happened? What did that plus eight? What did he do to your function? What did he do? Yeah, he moved it up. He raised it. Like took him on an elevator ride, right? Everybody get on the elevator. We're all going to go up eight spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Boop. All right, everybody get off. This is where, this is your floor, right? So it just moves it up eight spaces. Can you just imagine that? Like imagine, so in my classroom, the way I describe this is I'm like, hey, um, hey Joe, I need you to move three spaces forward. And then he just moves three desks towards the front of the class. Does that make sense? So same thing goes here. He's just moving three or, or eight spaces in this case. And you guys are like, but wait, Ms. Johnson, functions can move? Yes. Look, I just moved them. Or actually, you guys did. I just listened to what you said. Compare the functions f of x and g of x. Compare the functions f of x and g of x. Wait, what? f of x and g of x. So let me turn these guys off really quick. So here's f of x. One half to the x plus one. This is weird. One half to the x. Whoa, look at what happened. Do you guys all see what happened? What happened to this? What happened to this compared to this? See what happened? Anybody want to describe what happened to green and blue? It's yeah. Like it's flipped. Yes. Flipped is the word that I want you to use. The mathematical word that we use is called reflections. Do you guys remember reflections? So reflections to me is like if this was the mirror, or if this is the piece of paper and I folded it, this part here went over here. And this part here went over here. You guys all see it? Okay. So um, I don't know. I used to do this as a child. Did you guys ever do this as a child? So like I would write, this is my random notepad. You can't see it, but there. Um, I would write something on the notepad in lead. You guys will see this lead. You guys will see it. Oh. Uh, come on, virtual background. There it goes. Okay. And then have you ever done this? And then you fold your piece of paper. I encourage you to do this because this is actually one of the things that 
I'm going to turn off my virtual background so you guys can see. Give me one second. Sorry, those of you watching the replay of this, you won't get this at all. So I'm going to turn off my virtual background. All right. So do you see this? So I wrote this high right here. You guys all see my high? And then I folded it. Right? You guys all see me folding it? And then I colored on top of my high. And then what happens is it's called transferring. This lead transferred to this side. So this is a reflection of this, and this is my line of reflection. So I'm going to say it again. This is a reflection of this, and this is my line of reflection. You guys all see that? Yes? Okay. So um, play with those things. This is what my daughter's room looks like. You're welcome. You're welcome. I know. Um, okay. So this is called a reflection, where this reflected across my line of reflection and it gave me this green one right so that's what happened here right that's why it's pointed this way and then it said plus one so let me do plus one where's this plus one gonna go what's gonna happen to the green guy what's gonna happen to this green guy when i put plus one here you guys should all know this plus one what's gonna happen what's gonna happen someone say it in the chat come on let's go right yeah, very good. Who else? Come on. You... Oh, Ricky, you're like frozen. You can use your fingers too. Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Is it going to go left? Is it going to go right? Which way is it going to go? No. I only got one person. All right. So I... that person is right. It does move up one. Okay, so that moved up one. So before this point was right here, and now it's up here. I need you guys to be wrong together. I'd rather you be wrong together than be wrong on the quiz by yourself. Okay. All right, so it moved up one. What happened to this guy though? G of X. What happened to my G of X? Look at him. Does he look like he moved up one? Does he look like he moved up one? I know he's kind of tiny here. I'll try to go over here. Maybe, maybe it's a better picture. Let's make him gigantic -er so you guys can actually see. Does it look like he moved up one? No, right? It looked like he moved down. Now before that point was that zero one right here. You guys all see it? Zero one where the top of my little cursor is. How many spaces did it move down? How many spaces did that guy move down? How many spaces do you think that guy moved down? Someone said one. Let's try. I like that you guys are taking risks. Good. Take risks. Be wrong. Who cares? So when someone said, Ms. Johnson, move it down one. Let's see if it gets to where you want it to be. So down one would be like this, like minus one like this. Is that where you wanted it? So this is why I like programming so much. For those of you who are going to go into programming, programming will show you that you did it wrong. In math, you have to kind of understand a little bit more in order for you to understand. I want it to go all the way down here. You guys all see it? So maybe I shouldn't have used one. What should I use? Try two, Miss Johnson. Okay. Is that what it looks like? Uh, no, it probably needs to be one more. <gasps> That's what it is. It's right there. Down three, Miss Johnson. Yeah. Because if your original guy, um, let me let me just go here. If your original guy if your original guy is there at zero one. Then in order to get him down to that point right there, we had to move him down three spaces. So he took the elevator down three floors, right? One, two, three. Does that make sense? All right. Let me just do one more and then I think you guys are going to be ready. Okay. Actually, no, not this one. Actually, we're done. So um, now you are able to do your, um, your stuff. Um, we'll go over takeaways in another video when, when we come back, but you are able to do your exit ticket. Now, listen, how does the graph of G of X 
x minus 2 compared to the graph of f of x equals x. Okay, how do these look? So you could talk about your graphs, you could talk about your intercepts, you could talk about, you know, whatever you want. Same thing goes here. How does this compare to this? Now you guys should be equipped, well equipped with being able to answer this really well. Now, if you can't answer this, that's not a problem, right? Just figure out where you don't understand. And that's what we need to start making sure that you do understand.